my small intelligence into a tried and appropriated, understood, I guess, ocean or sea or area. I think it's the ocean. No, I'm no less expert. Right. It's right. the kind of having been tried out, having been explored by no by no boat so far. Right. I know this vintage. Right. Right. That's true. Right. The ocean. Yeah. I mean, figuratively, yeah. means yeah. the whole area of Asia. Right. Can I ask questions about both Proterve and Remy? I can't figure out how to construe Remy. Yeah. And is Proterve supposed to be the author being brave? Or is it or is it the whirling sea that's going boldly and without constraint? Yeah. I think the second thing that I that I feel pretty sure about that it's the the seas it's the walls of the seas that that are um, obnoxiously swollen up right um, ab aggressively swollen up in an ablet of absolute um, the Remy I find much more difficult um, uh, I took it as a a way of defining Kumba that just as we say rowboat. You know, it's an or it's a boat of an oar, namely a small boat. Genitive of description uh, or material? Sorry. That genitive of description or material? Um, a boat of oar is what it says. Right. I called it a genitive of definition, but I'm not actually sure that is there such a thing, Jen? Genitive of definition, maybe. Um, it can't be description. I was trying something. to construe it with Indian of. I, I was trying to figure out how it could be true with, you know, ingenioli as an adjective or something. It just, so if you take, but it's the childish boat of an oar, the childish boat of oar-like type of my oar intelligence. Yeah. I mean, that's my idea. maybe of my not very intelligent oar. <laughs> oh, I don't. I don't think Ingeniolus modifies no, it Remy. It, it or. I think yeah, Ingeniolum I, is its oh, is a noun. Yeah, it is. So it's the, it's the, so right. that it's the childish boat of my stupid intelligence. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you just uh, take away the Remy altogether. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. Can everyone hear okay? Yes. It's the best we can do. My, I think I need my volume turned up. Um, by the way, I, I've realized we forgot to record. We haven't been recording, so I turned on the recorder uh, just a minute ago. So posterity will have lost That's the production unless we go back over it. Um, but posterity is a very small portion of the world. Um, Imagine that someday that's the only thing that survives of this work, and we've lost the beginning now. Well, no, that's, well, that's <laughs> true. That would, wouldn't that be ironic, right? <laughs> but I think in that case, civilization would be so much in the melting pot that it really wouldn't matter. Oh, you wouldn't be saying that, you know? Our we've classical works we have exactly the same thing happen. The beginning fell off. That's right. And we still want them. <laughs> yes, but I think if they, if we lost all, I think what a catastrophe. I mean. The cataclysm required to lose all existing texts of virtue published and otherwise. I mean, the internet would have to be down. And that would be a cataclysm, right? Whatever. So anyway, <laughs> so, uh, so Anthony, this is your moment, is that right? Jay. You ready? AJ Wells. Hey, oh, you yeah. keep calling me Anthony. <laughs> Are you not called Anthony? No, no, I'm Andrew, if you want to know my actual Oh, Andrew. Sorry, I don't know where the Anthony came from. Uh, I was wondering who Anthony was. So. Oh, no wonder. Okay, well, yeah, whenever right. you say, like, don't be intimidated, that's... You, oh, no. Okay, Andrew, take it away. All right, um, so I'm going to read the Latin first. Yeah, do you want to read Latin? Sed ne magnum de parvo videre, videre ar fing... From Gary, Fingure. Uh, Fingure. Yeah. Paca hike de multis sancti patrici. 
Gestis, Arve, Heritia, in, in Curtis, Octoribus, Memoria, Labila, Labili, Atrito, Sensu, uh, Vili, Sermone, Sed Affectu, Pisimo, Caritatis, Sanctitas, is that right? San Sanctitatis. Sanctitatis, Tue, uh, Tuae, et Actor Actoritatis, Imperio, Obindens, Carptem, Gravitimque, Explicari, Agridiriar. Agrediar. Agrediar. Good. Okay. But, I obviously but, have some can Latin. I make one Latin, Latin teachery comment about the pronunciation? Yes. I mean, obviously, there's there are lots of little refinements that you might that you can work on over time. But one really important thing I think is getting if you look at pauca de multi sancti patricii gestis, you really want to kind of reinforce at kind of all levels, intellectual and audio that multis gestis, you know, is that it's that dative ablative second declension plural long I S and a totally different animal from the ISs of sanctitatis and auctoritatis. You know, it's that it's it's a short I and a long I. And that for the endings, those matter so much that you just want on all levels to kind of really just grasp it as grasp that difference as much as you can. It's the same thing a little bit with if you look at Parwa Peritia, it's much harder. It's, it sounds right if, no matter how you say it, but you want to register that that's, those are long A's at the end because it's an ablative singular. It's Parwa mm -hmm. Peritia. You sound idiotic if you say it that way, but you want to make sure you know it's really long. Mm -hmm. So that's just my little teacherly moment. On, on the subject of the pronunciation, could, would this be maybe a good time to say a couple words about how like classical versus later pronunciation? Like what pronunciation system? Sure, we, we'll say what, you, say what you think. I just, I just read it the way I want to read it. I read, I read medieval Latin as though it were classical Latin, right? Well, that's and, certainly easier. Sorry? <laughs> Whereas the entire Vatican reads classical Latin as though it were Italian, right? So <laughs> you, you, you can do whatever you want, but what do you do, Jen? What would you recommend? If I knew for sure, like, exactly how it would have been pronounced at the time, I would prefer to do that, but I don't feel secure myself that I would know exactly how to do it, so that's kind of why I'm asking. Right. Well, you wouldn't be exact anyway. I mean, you'd have to be a 7th a, a well, century native Irish speaker speaking Latin with a native Irish accent. As we could practice that one. Right? <laughs> it's fun we could have. Um, but I think... So I, I, anyway, my position is I just read it like classical. So I, I don't care what people, people can do what they want to do. I mean, Joanna and Mona were reading it like classical, really, right? Mm -hmm. Trying. You're not consciously going out of your way to say. Mm -hmm. That's right. No, I, 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 I would read it like classical too, because if you, if you think of it, this is, um, it's an insular culture, rather just a strictly Irish culture at this point mm -hmm. in the history. And they're, in their writing at least, they're pretty precise with their Latin. Mm -hmm. So I would think they would do their best to be precise in their speaking as well. That's right. a nice thought. As far as they know. Right. I thought that U after the G was a sign that they probably would have been softening their Gs and he wanted to make sure it was pronounced Kogi Tosi. You know, he said Kogui, but I think that's probably just a hard name of the G, which to me would be a signal that that if it was a GI, he would have said Koji or something like that or whatever the form was then. So I, I don't know how far it was in the seventh century, but that was a little red flag to me. Larry, do you have any views on this? Yeah, well, I mean, the, the biggest issue with pronouncing medieval Latin is, is what the writer is, where he's writing from, <laughs> what period he's at, mm -hmm. uh, and all that kind of thing. But I would, I would err here on the side of classical Latin because part of the issue for writing this text is to bring the Irish church in line with the Roman church. And mm -hmm. so they're going to go for Roman pronunciation. 
So I would I would probably err at this point. We we still don't have quite the same. You know, we're starting to get the sound shifts in the sixth and seventh century that that are going to give us the Romance languages, but we're not there yet. Uh-huh. So I would err on the side of classical pronunciation here. Oh, good, that makes us feel much better. <laughs> Yeah, so we're on the right track. Follow, we've, got, we've, got, we've got total justification from the medievalists to be classic. Mm-hmm. Great. Um, I have spoken. <laughs> okay, Andrew, do you want to keep going? Okay. Uh, okay the, skip o- so now we skip over all of this table of contents. Wait, we didn't translate that. Oh, did we actually, did we actually no, translate that? We didn't that? actually translate that. What? We didn't translate it. Oh, we haven't translated the thing. Okay, we got sidetracked by pronunciation. Sorry, Andrew, go ahead. Okay, hopefully this will be better than my pronunciations. Um, your pronunciation was fine. I'm just doing your my little thing. Okay, uh, so for the first part, said name magnum to the comma. I said, but this may not seem great from a small shape. Like, I don't know, that doesn't seem too fluid to I me. I think like, you need a... You need a um, a le- it's a, it's more like lest I seem right. Um, so it's a negative purpose clause in order not to. And then take the vidyar as the main verb. Right. In order for me not to seem to be constructing a big thing from a little thing, to be making a mountain out of a molehill. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes, it does. Ne videar fingure magnum de parvo. Right. Okay. All right. And then it said, a few of these uh, should be like stories. A few of these stories from the many that St. Patrick carried. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, right. uh, Garrow can be like accomplished or did or just performed or the deeds that he did. Right. And the but, guest uh, becomes just a word for deeds or history. Right. Right. Okay. Think about Augustus's race gestae. It's the it's the um, his Shit deeds. Mm. Okay. With little knowledge of tradition. Um, okay. Then this list right here. The are these ablatives? Like I put unknown authors, slippery memory, and bruised feeling, cheap conversation. But should it be like? I feel like aren't they the ablative? Is this- yeah, they're all ablatives. You're all absolutely ablatives. right. They're all ablatives, kind of lined up next to each other. So. Mm. I guess they're all ablatives of manner, right? I, how am I going to do this with with a small amount of knowledge? Parva paritia. In certis autoribus, you're totally right, right? The authors are uncertain. Um, the memory of, of a sort of slippery memory and a worn out intelligence, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, or perception. Anybody got anything better for Atrito Sensu? Attenuate sin, attenuated sense. Dealt with dulled senses. Dulled senses, I like that. Dulled senses, yeah. Um, uh, and then he's, you got with Mune as well, right? With, with low down speech, like humble speech. Inferior. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah. I said cheap mm-hmm. conversation. I guess it's similar. Oh, uh, yeah, not I like the conversation, but I, <laughs> but I, it's a great, a great image of them all sitting around gossiping. But I, but I think it's more like dic- my diction is not very elevated. So this, okay. I think, we've seen this in some of our other texts that the authors just regularly begin. Patrick famously regularly begins, as you'll see, um, by apologizing for his own rhetorical skill. He just doesn't. He's basically saying, I'm not a very educated person. Mm-hmm. And it, it's almost almost obligatory to say that no matter how educated you are. You know, I don't know if Augustine says it, but I bet he does somewhere. Is this the you modesty know. tapas? Right. It's exactly. It's the false modesty tapas. It's, you know, it's, it's Einstein saying, I don't know much about math, but this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do my best kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Which we get in pretty much every single right. thing we've translated so far. Right. Well, I thought, and, I thought so. I just didn't really remember that. Yes. And, and sometimes they're being falsely modest, but they really are that bad. Right. <laughs> because sometimes they're right. <laughs> didn't Slopikius say it? And he's really quite good. He's yeah. quite good, but isn't the, um, uh, sorry, First Crusade. Right. Um, right. He really yeah. was bad. He really was bad. Right. Or at least low. 
Anyway, keep going. Yeah. Okay. But the affection of the most beautiful charity for said affectu pisimo caritatis. See, it, so affect with the, with the most pious, literally affectation or or uh, attempt at at charity, right? Mm -hmm. okay. I said the support and obedience of your empire. Uh, I shall reluctantly advance and selectively unfold, like tell my story where I want to. Yes, the second part of all that I think is, you're, you're absolutely right. The obedience, obedient, in obedience, imperium here really means the command, right? Not empire. So it can also just mean like in obedience, in obedience to your instruction, the instruction of your holiness and your authority. Okay. So in other words, he's telling I, I may not be a very good writer, but you told me to do this, so I'm doing the best I can. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Good. To the next section. Yeah, so now we skip over the table of contents. Okay. And before we go on, um, sure. before we go on that, affectu piissimo caritatis phrase, I don't think affectus is a I think it means emotion, affection. Good. Yeah. With the most mm. pious affection of charity, of loving yeah. kindness. The feeling. Affection. The feeling. Yeah. Emotion, okay. affection. Yeah, I think ablative of manner. Yeah, I can see that. With with the with the affection of the most pious charity or love. I like Jen's um, emotion or feeling. Mm -hmm. The most pious feeling of charity. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Urge, maybe impulse. Mm -hmm. Impulse is good. It, I mean, it really means like an emotion. That's. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. okay, I'll go with that. Uh, keep going, Andrew. Okay. Okay. Desire intention, but um, affection. Mm -hmm. Okay, so 1.1. 1. 1. Uh, well, we can, let's do the, do the, can you do the little sentence right after the table of contents? Oh, I oh, missed it. Yeah, I missed Palca. it. Like Palca de Sancti, Patrici, Britia, at virtue tibas mari uh how do you say his name? Mercu. Mercu Marcu Machini Dictante Aidio Slebtiensis Civitatis Episcopo uh conscripts it. Mm -hmm. Am I supposed to translate that? Yes, yeah, you it, it, <laughs> Few from the Saint. I don't have this written. These few from the Saint Patrick. Uh, uh, these few things about the Peritia, about the intelligence of Saint Patrick, oh, awesome. and about his virtutibus, about his virtue. About his virtues. And then we get this Irish name, right? Mercu, the son of, I mean, the of the clan of the Macthini. Mm -hmm. um, spoken like with. Uh, dict I should have given you a note here. Dicto here really means like commanding. It doesn't uh, mean like, dictating. It means like on the commands of Ido, the bishop of the city of um, Sleti. Um, and then you're back to these few things, Merchu conscripts it, has written. Mm -hmm. Right. So this I is his kind of um, signature <laughs> sentence. Okay. Right. I, have a, I have a question. Um, in terms of classical Latin, how um, R-C-H or C-C pronounced? Huh. Huh? Right. Okay, that's what I thought. So right. is, it like a, is it like a H or is it like a K? I, I just say... It's aspirated. K. K. Yeah, I just... K. Like, what's a word that has C-H in it? Um, chorus. 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 Right, thank chorus. you. Chorus. chorus. Okay. Right. It's borrowed from the Greek. It's the oh, it's how they borrow the Greek. Yeah, it was borrowed. Someone, from the Greek the Biddle has said it's pronounced Mwirchu. Hmm. Mwir. Who? Uh, Mwirchu. Mwirchu. Where the yeah. pH is pronounced like. Yeah, Irish Irish has the cha, but Latin, of course, does not. So that, that's kind of our issue here: is that he's writing in Latin, but spelling his name with 
Irish mm -hmm. pronunciation. Well, how do you say it, Larry? I'd, I'd, I'd go with the Irish and Murchu, Baku, Machenny, Machenny, excuse okay. me. So you say Murchu, but when you're, if you were talking, if you were lecturing about them, you'd just say Murchu, not Murchu. Correct. Right. But the, and you're anglicizing the Irish? Correct. Okay. Does anyone know any Irish? I tried to teach myself. Yeah, time, and then I, yeah I, I studied a semester in, in grad school. Oh, yeah? in I've got a dictionary <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> well, I think it'd be if you can spot any Irishisms in the Latin, that would be really fun. Mm. Uh, well, yeah, those those names are all Irish. It, it the the problem with with Irish and Welsh and uh, all, all other times of Gaelic is it's they're deceptively they're pronounced deceptively differently the words mm. um, even though they're in you know a Latinate uh, right. they're not pronounced the same way that we would normally expect mm -hmm. right. they, they combine the Latin letters to represent sounds that don't go with those letters right, <laughs> right. exactly <They're, laughs> you know, like like, uh, like um, whales in Welsh is looks like Kimru and it's actually Kumri. Right. It, okay. <laughs> so that one I actually knew, but anyway, that's, yeah. I think that's in fact the limit of my Welsh. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, I know and, a few other, but that's about it. Andrew, do you want to keep going? Yep. Okay. Pat Patricia, uh, gosh, Patricius, Ki et Soket, Vocabator, Brito, Nazione. In Britain, in Britannas, Britannis, Britannis, Natus, Patre, Coel, Farnio, Diacono, Ortus, Filio, Ut, Ipsi, Ait, Otiti, Presbyteri, Ki, Fuit, Fuit, Vico, Banavem, Tabernei, Hod, Procol, Amari, Nostro, Mari, Nostro. Amari Nostro, Quim, Vicom, Constantiner, Constantiner, Indopitarque, Comparimus, Esi Ventre, Matre Etium, Conceptus, Concessa, Conceptus, Conceptus, Concessa, Nomine. Yeah, the C's are, like, if we're going to be classical, the C's are going to be hard. And I think both classical and medieval would want you not to say your QIs and your QEs as though they're French and Spanish, right? We tend to say K and Ki if you're coming to it from Romance languages, but it's really Qui and um, where do we have it? Um, Quit Wico, right? It's Qui, not Ki. Mm -hmm. Right, it's just the the French is. I, I don't know if you know French, but somehow French and, and Spanish kind of mess people up. Um, so you really want to make it a Q U sound. Okay. Okay, take it away. Okay, said Patrick, who was also called Soket, of British race, born in Britain, son of the father by Calpurnio, a risen deacon. He tells um, him. No, I think he's just. He's just, Ortus, um, Ortus just means that he's, he's arisen from, in other words, he's born from, he's the son of. He's risen from so, a deacon? So he's the yeah. son of the deacon, the, his father, the deacon Calphurnius. Okay. You see how Ortus can't go with diacono, the U.S. and the O don't, can't go together. Right. Right. So, it's, so, so what goes together is patre Calphurnio diacono. Those mm -hmm. all go together. And then he, Patricius, is Ortus. Mm -hmm. As so, a Holy Cross student, you might be troubled by the fact that these priests are having so many babies, but <laughs> you just suck it up. <laughs> well, yeah, the, 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 the notion that the local priests had to be celibate wasn't uh, reinforced right. in the 12th or 11th century, excuse me. Right. Yeah. In the forms. That's, this is way before that, yeah. I know. Yeah, this anyway. is 5th century, so. <laughs> Keep going. Okay. So he tells us himself was the son of Potitus, a presbyter, mm -hmm. who escaped the village of Banavim, Thaberni, Thaberni, I don't know. Right, it's, right, who just, who just was of the village 
And then Banawem Taberni, I guess, is just in opposition to the village, right? The village of okay. Banawem Taberni. Is Banawem uh uh, yeah, I or think so. I think, or I'm, really I'm not sure. I think it, I would have said the second thing. Would you say, it's, can we just say it's weirdly indeclinable? Banawem. Right. Larry, do you know about this? I mean, I, I don't know how to sort of... Ma, uh, oh, Banavem? Yeah, Banavem. Uh, yeah, it's it's uh, indeclinable. Okay. So the fuit is the past of sum, right? Of essay, right. not fuget. Not what? Fugit, yeah. Fugit. Oh, right. No, not Fugit. Fugit. It was Fugit. Oh, right. good. That, I, didn't, I didn't understand. That's right. He said that. Thank you. Good pickup, yeah. Joanna. So, AJ, um, the, the, the food is just the past of sum, right? right. Or, or est. Right. We yeah. would expect Fugit. maybe Habitabat, who okay. lived. Okay, it's not an estate. It's not food. No, that would no, be Fugit. Fugit. That's no. what I'm saying. That would have a G. Oh, okay. This, okay. this is Fuit. He was. Okay. Just as he was. It's the past of est. Mm hmm. I, I remember I was deciding between those two, and then, um, okay, and then went with escape. Okay. Yeah, if I'm remembering correctly, and I should probably double check before that, I think that's exactly the way that Patrick expresses it. Um, that he says, food. Or food. Mm -hmm. Is that, you know, in Wiko rather than uh, where we would expect where uh, uh, in come rather. Uh -huh. See what I mean? Yeah, uh, we can compare this. Certainly this opening paragraph, these opening paragraphs of Mertue are very based. This is the one source we know. It's based on Patrick's confession. Um, so it does make, and he says that, right? As ut ipse ayat means he's reading Patrick's own text and getting his information. As he himself from it. says, yeah. Do we have anything mm -hmm. by Patrick? Oh yeah, yes. uh, and in fact, if we get through this text in time, we'll read certainly the confession um, yeah. and maybe some of the other stuff. Um, I mean, it is kind of exciting that there is this, and, and really no one, for all the doubts and, and uncertainties about who Patrick was and when he was, no one seems to be questioning ever the authenticity of, these act of his actual letters, his confession and this, he also wrote a letter that survives and some other things. I think some of the other things that are attributed, like the, there's this famous um, hymn, The Breastplate, um, which is, I think, not thought to be by him. Is that right, Larry? That's correct, yeah. Right. But, the, but the confession is definitely his. Do, am I right? Yes, the, yeah. both the confession and the, uh, the uh, epistles are, right. are by him. It's just exactly when in the fifth century he, he right. lived is the big question. Right. But they, so they're weirdly authentic. They're just weirdly also not very helpful at telling us things like date and place and time and stuff, but still very authentic. Uh, keep going, Andrew. Okay. I said, not far from the mm -hmm. sea to our grave. Uh, we learned. Wait, that... where's the grave? Where's it not at? far from the sea. Amari. I said Amari was Amari the sea. From the sea, right, and then Nostro, not far from our sea. Okay, our sea. I don't know where I got the grave. <laughs> okay, we learned that the village is firmly and indubitably Ventre. Mm -hmm. Right, and, and right, which village we have learned absolutely and totally without question is Ventre. Okay. And if only we knew what that act the text actually was, that would be really exciting. And if we knew where where it was, that would be even more exciting. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then also his mother's name was Concessa. Yes. Okay. Good. Cool. Great. Okay. Um, I will uh, I will leave you to read. Uh, no no one knows where this place is, right? Um, and it's sad because there actually is a place called Ventre, which was known in Roman Britain. And, but people say it can't be the right one because it's in the middle of the island. It's as far away from the sea really as you can get. I don't, it's still not very far from the sea, but, but presumably he wouldn't have said that it wasn't far from the sea if it was, it has to be closer to the sea than that, I guess is what people think. Anyway, so they don't know where it is. 
but they do know that he was English, right? This is the this fundamental fact about Patrick that if we learn nothing else, we learn this that he was Britain. Well, well, British. Britain, yeah. We have to distinguish British from English. Yeah. Right. So he's British. He's not Anglo Saxon. Right. Totally not English. Right. Right. Good point. Right. Him described as a Romanized Britain. Right. But spectacularly not Irish. No. Correct. Anyway. No, but probably um, a lot more related to the Irish than to the later Anglo Saxons. Yes, that's true. Absolutely. Because definitely he's a type of Celt, like, probably. Right. Likely. Okay. Well, thank you, Andrew. That's great. Um, and plus, you're an actual student. This is so exciting. Um, um, Levi, are you are you there? Yep, right here. All right, right in front of me. Uh, take it away. Okay, one point two. Mm -hmm. uh, anorum XVI, I suppose. Quer cum ceteris captus in hunc barbarorum insulam adwectus est et apod quendam dentilem imitem quae regem in servitute detentus qui sexinem more hebraico in ea captivitate exegit cum temore dei et tremore secundum solmiste sententiam in vigilis et orationibus multis Kenkies in die et kenkies in nocte orabat lebenter redendiens, quae dei sunt deo et quae caeseras caeseri. Caesaris. Caesar. Caesaris. Caesaris. Caesari. Thank you. Incipiens quae temere deum et amare omnipotentem dominum. Nam usque ad id temporis ignorabat deum verum sed tunc spiritus per webat in eo. Yes. Um, incipiens is what the classicists would say. If you want to get all medieval, you could say incipiens, but you don't want to say incipiens. <laughs> yes, my mistake. Yeah. Sorry about that. And also, this is kind of trivial, except that it's part of the beauty of the language. If you look at the word the verb in front of deum, ignorabat. You want to, you want to, again, if you give the quantity, you get the quantities right, the, the, the accent will come in the right place. It's not ignor, ignorabat, it's ignorabat. Just right. as you got fairwaybat right, right? It's not fairwaybat, it's fairwaybat, ignorabat. And that actually, I think, is quite important to the sound of the language. There's something very jarring about the accent wrong there and the quantities wrong there. I can't help you. I mean, um, once once you move to, I don't know where you are, Levi, in your, in, your, in your Latin studies, but certainly Andrew is just moving out of a books, I take it, where they mark the long marks, but most texts don't mark the long marks for you, and you're supposed to know them, and of course most of us don't, and it means that you something you really want to work on and getting is sort of learning the bit, some of the most the more common words, the more common sounds, so that you get the rhythm of the language. Right, and I should have known that one because it's a stem vowel. So in this word, it's going to be long. Mm -hmm. It's always right. It's just hard to keep everything in in. It's hard to keep that in mind w along with everything else. Right. You know, and especially if you've been used to having long marks written for you, it's very tricky. Which is the good reason. I think one of the words, well, one of the words that, that almost everybody um, misses in the in the um, the declensions is tempus temporis. Mm -hmm. Yes. Everybody says temporis, but it's tempus right. temporis. Right. Well, that was exactly the same thing with Kaiseris there. Right. Yeah, Kaiseris. And that, right. that really is the good reason to mark long marks in text for intermediate students. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yes. <laughs> Right. It's so <laughs> hard. I agree, Jen. Uh, okay, Levi, take it away. Okay, honorum uh, XVI, so Thanks. of the 16th year, Puercum Ceteris Captus, the boy with others was captured, or the boy is captured with others. In hunk barborum, into this 
oh, excuse me, Insulam, into this island of uh, barbarians. At that Dosest, he is uh, abducted, I suppose. Yeah, or again, but remember, it's a, it's a, it's a deponent perfect, so it's he was abducted. Oh, okay. right. Adwehor right. has a perfect adwetus s. I mean, obviously, it does mean he is abducted, but right. But the perfect you you want you want to register that it's a real perfect. If you look back again at that first word onorum, what case is that, Levi? Uh, genitive. So it's no. not in his sixteenth year. How do you translate that? Do you know? Have you seen me? Have you seen this expression before? I don't think so, but I think it's a genitive of time. I don't know if that's the expression, but I know the genitive could be a time related to time somehow. It's actually a genitive of description. He was a boy of 16 years. It's how you can say 16 years. Ah, that it makes one, more sense. One way to say that. So as a 16 year old boy, he's captured mm -hmm. the rest, et cetera. Right. That makes, that's clear. Thank you. Yep. Okay. So as a vectorist, he, uh, he, uh, at a pod. and near a certain, or excuse me, and to a certain tribe, and to a certain, excuse me. And Gentilis means pagan. It's the same word as Gentile. And, oh. that's, and this is something, I should have glossed this, but we're so used to this in medieval texts. It's from the Vulgate. It's what it's what Latin, the Greek the Latin uses for the Gentiles. So it becomes when Christians use it, it means pagan. And it's an adjective. Right. 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 And that would flesh out with in the Right. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So and near a certain uh, Gentile and harsh or pagan and harsh king mm -hmm. uh, was detained in servitude. Yes. Good. Okay. Yeah, and up yeah. can just mean at the house of, like among, at the house of, so. Right. Yeah. Okay, so. It's like the French C-H-E-Z, she, at, at right. someone. So he was detained by the kings, like at the court or something, right, in his prison. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Yeah, I did have a question about Senexem. I'm, I'm not sure what word it is. At, it, it's obviously a number of some sort. Oh, it means uh, six. Oh, six. This, uh, uh, for six years. Oh, oh, is it a combination of the word for years and six? Yeah. I think so. Six on them and compounding long vowels reduced. So I'll go to it. It's a short vowel, actually. Copiosis keep it. Very linguistic. Anas is actually short, though. It's a short, <laughs> it's a short mm -hmm. egg. And that's why it reduces. Mm hmm. Okay, so he who, so, okay, so for six years, Mora, and I looked at Mora, but I couldn't find a translation for it. Uh, in, the, in the Hebrew custom, it's the ablative of most Morris. Most oh, Morris. Hebrew custom. Right. Ah, makes more sense. So, so who, for six years, in the way of the Jews. Right, Okay. So for six years in the way of the Jews, in that captivity, he was, oh, like the Jews were in captivity, in that he was uh, spent. Spent in captivity. Oh, he spent in captivity, right, because he is their ex, right, like exo. I guess, so grammatically, I think he exeget sex enem. He spent six years yeah. in the Hebrew custom in that captivity. He lived out, X A. Right. He lived out is good, right? right. Um, now, does anybody have a clear, cl is this so obvious that I'm just being stupid? Why exactly? Is this a reference to like the seven year sabbatical or were the, Jew the Jews weren't in Israel for, I mean, in Egypt for six years, were they? That was way longer than that. Right, it's 400 well, like years. 400, yeah. Right. Yeah, in Leviticus, you, you go into servitude for, for seven years, and then you're let go. That's Ooh. Okay. I think I the more you that was actually ever historically true, <laughs> but, the, but that's what the Levitical text says. Okay, but that's right. what that refers to. That's great. I, Thank you. 
Maybe I something assume. to do with six days and then the seventh day you rest. I don't know. Well, I assume I they're related, but that but Larry's point is that it's directly connected with servitude. Uh -huh. Yes, I, but that's I, seven years. Right. I would actually make a break between the sexenum and the more hebraico and take the more hebraico with what comes after, who spent six years in that cap captivity in the manner of the Jews, namely, cum timore dei et tremore secundum psalmistis sententiam in giliis et orationibus multis. So that's how he spent his captivity. Well, see, I, but that's not, I, that's what I thought was possible, but I didn't think that was actually, I think actually Larry's suggestion makes that not necessary, right? In other words, he's not saying he was being pious the way the Jews were being pious while he was a slave. If Larry, I mean, Larry's Leviticus passage just means he was spending seven, six years as a slave the way you Jews, were a slave. Like among, if you were a Jew, right. right. So the piety is kind of irrelevant. I mean, okay. we hope they're pious, but that's not the deal. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, so continuing on, cum temore dei et tremore, with the fear of the Lord and trembling, secundum solmiste tentiam, as as the psalmist. Secundum uh, is can be a preposition with the accusative meaning according to. Oh, okay. So, according to the the sense of the, the, the psalmist, right? The 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 the, the sentiment of the psalmist, right. right? In other words, in other words, he's explaining cum tremore dei et tremore, right? As words that come from a psalm. Yep. Right. So, psalmist is not really. It's not acting as genitive. It's kind of like. No, it's genitive. It's genitive. Psalmist. It's genitive with sententium. According to the opinion of the psalmist. Yes, but what case does the psalmist have? Genitive. Yeah. It's, a, it's a medieval E form instead of AE. Oh, okay. Right, so starting in the 12th century, and the manuscripts of this text are 12th century and later, but starting in the 12th century, we start losing AE combinations, both in Latin and in the vernacular. Mm -hmm. And they just get written as E's. Right. So oh, that's, that's what's going on here. Is it should be psalmistai, but the A is now missing. Mm -hmm. so is that related? Is, uh, Larry, is that related to like reflecting a phonological change at that point? Like Correct. the I diphthong had started to level to A, and so they just started to write it as A. Correct. That's really cool. Thanks. And it did that. It did that long before the 12th century, wow. in in vulgar Latin. Correct. So mm -hmm. the A E O E, they all collapse. They close mm -hmm. into something more like E. And then into A. Yeah, absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, did you do the Wigili Isid Orationibus? I forget. No, I did not. So okay. in uh, in vigils and in many prayers, right. he spent this time, I suppose. Good. Um, and a hundred times in, oh, excuse me, and Kinkinus a hundred times in the, in the day and Kinkius in nocte and a hundred times in the night, or Rabat, he was praying. Mm -hmm. uh, Lebenter uh, freely, the he uh, freely giving back, mm -hmm. uh, and then he's quoting Jesus here, quite the isun, what to God, what, or quite the isun, what is God's deal mm -hmm. to God, and quite. Kaisaris, Kaisari, mm -hmm. uh, what of Caesar's to Caesar. In Kipiens, Que, and beginning, Timeritium to fear God, et amare omnipotentium dominum, and to love the omnipotent Lord. Nam usque for. Usque ad. Excuse me, usque ad id tempo. Temporis, 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 excuse me, temporis. for up until that time. Uh, uh, all the way up to that time. The squad. Ah, all the up way up to, to that, that time. time. Right. Including all the time beforehand. Mm -hmm. um, Ignorabate and Werum, he was 
ignoring mm -hmm. the true Lord, the true yeah. God, excuse me, the Spiritus Spiritus in Eo, but now the Spirit uh, roused or was roused in him. Or his spirit. Yeah, it was like boiling. Boiling, boiling. Boiling. Right. Good. But ignorabat doesn't mean he was ignoring him. It means he didn't know him. Right. Ignore. Good point. Right. Right. He, right. Um, Just interesting that it doesn't mean in English what it does mean here. <laughs> Ignorant rather than ignore would be helpful as a derivative. Mm -hmm. Ignorant, like right. not knowing about. Right. Right. Yeah, I mean, literally, ignore is pretend not to know. <laughs> I guess that's true. This is just ignorant of. All right, thank you. That was great. Good job. Thank you. Victoria, are you ready? Yes. So this is reading. Oh, be before we start, in my text anyway, there are two, count them, two spectacular misprints. Um, uh, they're all in in the last sentence. It says multos et falsos deos antibus, yeah, and it should be adorantibus, which makes a oh, huge right. difference. I <laughs> that. Okay. Um, I didn't know what third that line from the bottom: multos et falsos deos adorantibus. Ah. Trust me, it'll make that sentence so much easier. And then at the very end, um, I've printed both the number and the word wikesimo, and you just drop the word wikesimo. You just write the word 20, I mean, the, just keep the number 23, 23 and drop the word in front of it. I've even... Well, that, that, expl that explains a lot, actually. Yeah, I'm sorry for that. I will go and proofread the rest of the text as soon as I can. Okay, and pronounce things like that are written pene as pine going with the classical sure a that should be there we we'll want understand to, yeah. it either way victoria we're fine with the other as well all right quote begora post multus ibi tribulationes post famam et citem post frigora et nuditates post pascenda pecora post frequentias angelici victori ah, victorici ad deo ad illum nisi, post magnus virtutis omnibus paene notas, post responsa divina, divina equibus unum aut duo haec, exemple tantum gratia, demonstrabo, bene iunius, um, quito iturus ad patrium tuum, et iterum, ecce nauis tua parata est, Quae non erat prope, sed forte habebat ducenta milia passuum, ube numquam habuerat iter. Post haec omnia, ut diximus, quae enumerare pene anemone possunt, cum ignotis barbaris gentilibus quae hominibus, multos et falsos deus adorantibus? Yes. Ia, iam in nave sibi parata, Deserto terino gentilique rege cum actibus suis, et accepto celesti uh, eterno quae deo, in comitatu sancti spiritus, et praecepto divino, aetatis sue anno 23, ad Britannias navigavit. Um, so, after... Therefore, after many tribulations, after hunger and thirst, after cold and nudity, um, after, after um, pasturing herds, and after um, the constant attendance of the angel Victoricus, mm -hmm. who was the angel Victoricus, um, was all these things were sent by God to him mm -hmm. um, after many brave deeds known to almost everybody mm -hmm. after divine responses from which one or two from these things from which things one or two 
by way of example, exempli tantum gratia, I will demonstrate here. Um, you are hungering well. Fasting. Uh, fasting. Uh, fasting. You are fasting well. Um, and quickly, um, you will quickly journey to your fatherland. And again, behold, uh, your boat is prepared for you, or your boat is prepared, um, which was not near, but perhaps, uh, perhaps was Habebat. I'm certain he had it um, 200 miles away, mm -hmm. um, where he had never had a journey before. Good. Great, great a journey before. After all these things, as I have said, which uh, are possible to be enumerated by almost nobody, um, with unknown barbarians, unknown strangers, and with pagan men worshipping, uh, going down to Antibus and Adorantibus, worshipping or adoring many and false gods, uh, now in the ship pre prepared for him, leaving the land and the pagan um, pagan king, pa pagan ruler, with his followers, Aptibus? Uh, his acts, his deeds. His, his de okay. And, and his deeds. And, um, okay, a kepto... Is God accepting him? Yeah, it's a passive. Mm -hmm. Being accepted by the eternal celestial God in communion of the, in the communion into the communion of the Holy Spirit. Uh, slow, slow, not so fast. <laughs> With the celestial and eternal God Akepto having been accepted by Him. Okay, that's what I was. All right, so Akepto, he. Patrick is doing the accepting. Right. He's right. Okay. You, you, this is kind of weird. You would expect a kind of a, a declarative sentence here. Patrick accepted the Lord, right? But at, at, this is kind of a standard rhetorical trick. You put the really interesting part of your sentence in a subordinate clause, like a cum in wearsome clause or an ablative absolute. Okay. Um, so it kind of throws you off because this is actually really important, right? Patrick has now accepted God. Right, but it's in an ablative absolute. So it's with with the eternal, with the eternal and celestial God being accepted, mm -hmm. having been yeah, right, having okay, in in communion in the communion of the Holy Spirit, uh huh, um, and from from or in accordance with X, I'm having uh -huh. a hard time. X, the divine command mm -hmm. um, in the year of his age, twenty three, yeah. dropping. Decimo with great relief. Um, he sailed to Britain. Yes. <laughs> Good. He sailed uh, to Britain. Um, so I, there's a lot there in that long, long sentence. Um, uh, a couple of things that I may try to remember to make a note of. The very beginning, the third word, uh, don't forget Ibi, just which means there, after many tribulations there. Um, the other point to make clear, uh, I should maybe make a note on this. Um, nuditas doesn't mean running around naked. It means your clothes aren't as nice and as, as, as warm as you might think. Um, it, sometimes nudist means stripped to the waist. It means you're, like you, you, somebody will be nudist to work. Um, but here I think it just means not having very nice warm clothes. I don't think well, I, I hear huge echoes of Paul. Mm -hmm. Second Corinthians six, right? When he says, um, "We have we have remained the servants of God through through all of these trials and tribulations, through cold, through fastings, through mm -hmm. through prison, through there's a whole list of these things. They're very it's a very similar list to this actually. Through Corinthians six. Corinthians six, okay. Second Good. Second Corinthians. Second, all right. Second Corinthians six. Or two Corinthians, as we uh, sometimes yeah. call it. Apparently. <laughs> 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 um, no, we don't. <laughs> Some of our leaders would say two Corinthians. They should um, say leaders. <laughs> um, Those ministers of the word from the beginning. 
Um, and the other thing, just I, I, I put a note in this, the thing about Victoricus I think is fascinating. We're going to meet Victoricus in a minute, but here he seems to be an angel sent by God, right? Even though he's not, um, uh, he's, he's actually a martyr, not an angel. Um, but I also like the idea that he, that, that a martyr would be appearing to Patrick, um, he calls him angelic, not necessarily an angel, angelus, but um, it's, he uses yeah, the adjective angelic. angelic. So yes, I, but, but scholars seem to say, seem to be interpreting this as, as really meaning an angel. I was, I mean, I, I sort of, my first reaction was to just take angelicus as meaning something like mystical That's or saintly, right? But they don't do that. Um, Larry, do you have an opinion about that? I have no. no yeah, I know, I know a lot of people think that 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 it should be an angel here, but I've never quite bought that because he does he does use the adjective rather than the noun. Uh -huh. Right, okay. it's not it's not the angel Victoricus. It's right, angelic. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna lost means messenger. So, it's I mean that an uh, angel is just a messenger actually. Well, early you know early. Uh, Celtic right, saints right, which of course are very live. are very liminal. They're they're I mean the, some of them uh, are apparently um, syncretizations of pagan gods or goddesses, mm -hmm. um, and apparently and a lot of the early ones have a lot of big almost godlike powers. Mm -hmm. And so the you know and, and later when when the Irish Church was brought into the Roman Church. Uh, more closely, shall we say, um, you know, that was sort of mainstreamed in, into the um, cult of saints. But the when you have these earlier texts with the early Irish saints, you have a lot of anomalous, strange stuff, as we saw with St. Brendan. Mm. Um, and, uh, you know, they may actually mean that this guy became an angel. Right. You know, in the late antique daimones kind of sense mm -hmm. of, a, of a hero an ancient hero raised to uh demigod status divas right he was right and of course in that sense right these these beings appear in visions which is exactly how patrick mm -hmm. uh, experiences victoricus is right. the vision yeah. yeah well you sort of we've sort of moved to a kind of halfway house i mean you're, in other words what you're saying is it's not like Merchu thinks that Victoricus is an angel like one in the like an angel in the Bible, but no. he's a demonic being a the way angels or are. Or maybe demonic. a messenger, literally. Yeah. Messenger, yeah. yeah, or a mess. I I don't know whether they still thought of use the word angela. I mean, whether in 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 seventh century Latin they're they're aware of it as a messenger so much, but that's something we'd have to look at the language of Angelicus. Yeah, I mean, um, a, a lot of the, the lore, for, like Lucifer and everything, that's really not being um, brought into effect. It's, it's post-biblical mm -hmm. regarding Lucifer as a fallen angel, and that's influenced by uh, the Book of Enoch, which is the first right. century you see. And, you know, a lot of that lore really wasn't brought into effect. It wasn't even formulated until around the 4th century. So mm -hmm. you've got... Um, it, a lot of this, as I said, is going to be anomalous to what it is later, because later on it's all been made official and mainstreamed and things like that. And some of these um, early oddball things have been simply dropped. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then they pretend that they never existed. But if you're going to have the earlier texts, then of course those things will appear in them. Right. Any other thoughts? Should we move on? We're, we're dragging the afternoon out longer than... <laughs> um, just one little thing, in case people are curious. Okay. 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 The, um, X, X, I, I, I. It is a, it's a Latin number, so you would read it. You wouldn't read the, the like letters. You would read Wicasimo Tertio in the 23rd year, um, or Wicasimo, you can write it both ways, but... Um, but, but you would actually say a number. The same thing with XVI in the previous paragraph. You'd say say decim, not XVI. So would that be like Wiginti Tertia? Wicasimo Tertio. Because it's the 23rd year of his age, he used the um, ordinal number, not the cardinal. Okay. 
Yeah, I think all the world over, people just do what Victoria did and shrug their shoulders when faced with the number, right? We, yeah. we know we can look it up if we have to, but we don't want to. And why should we? Life is short and hard. I wanted to know. Okay. <laughs> we had well, no it's great if somebody will tell us. It's <laughs> looking up that's hard. <laughs> Paula, are you ready? Are you uh, do, do the next chunk? Yeah. All right. Thank you, Victoria. Um, Okay, so uh, Ternis itaque diebus totidemque noctibus, um, and so after both three days and nights all the same, quasi ad uh, Right, totidem meaning and, and as many, right? All the same in the sense of the same number. Yeah. Right. That both, they're, they're three days and they're three nights. Right. Yeah. Right. And, yeah, okay. As, as many nights. Mm -hmm. and as many nights, yeah. Um, quasi ad modum Iona, um, sorry, Ionae in mari cum iniquis fluctuans, um, as if to the shore of Iona in the surging sea with the ungodly ones. Oh, wait, no, I don't think so. Um, isn't this, I should have given you a note, I guess. This is Jonah, <laughs> right? And ad modum. Oh, I was um, thinking Iona. Right. Yeah, no, no. The island of Iona. Scotland okay. and Ireland and monasticism yeah. and all that stuff. No, this is yeah. um, as though, as though in the way, you know, yeah. I think in Mum just means like Jonah in the sea. Yeah. Okay. That makes a lot more sense. I was going, why is he going to Iona when he's going to Ireland? He's on the wrong side of the right. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong island. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Jonah makes a lot more sense. <laughs> Okay, and pl plus he's he's making allusions all over the place right. here. I should add a note to just that, right? Okay. And the word admodum is is uh, you know often also written together as one word admodum whoever, in the way of like. Yes, the when it's one yeah, word it doesn't mean no, like sort of. Yeah. Yeah. It, it can be, but yeah. but I'm just saying it's it's a it's a phrase that goes together. Right. right. Yeah, I, I wouldn't write it together here. No, no. So okay, so so like Jonah, fluctuans, um, you know, floating, swimming in the sea, cuminiquis right. with the evil men. Right. Which, if you've ever been in the Irish Sea during a storm, makes perfect sense. Well, I think, but this, I think, but the point is, jo wasn't Jonah on a ship with with evil, mm -hmm. with ungodly people? Yeah, they, they, they actually. They were, they were pagans, but they weren't actually evil because um, they refused to throw him in. Oh, okay. And Jonah had to persuade them to throw him in um, because that, that was one of the things that, that, um, that, that, and then the ship was immediately saved is that the idea was that they, it's part of the theme of that the, the pagans are more faithful than Jonah is no. <laughs> kind of yeah, thing. They were, they were very scared and they drew, and they drew lots, I think, right? To yeah. Figure out Whose fault it was and who to throw in, and then they right. didn't want to throw him in because he was the guest. Yes, but, exactly. They, a lot. <laughs> right, they didn't want to throw. You know, the the, the stranger that you treat the stranger yeah. well. Mm -hmm. That that was even worse luck than than um, mm -hmm. you know throwing him in. So they they uh, they refused to do it, and he had to persuade them to do it. Huh. Uh, I think our note helps us here is that here I think iniquis, uh, iniquius, uh, you know, is more more general than specific, you know, so the ungodly, the unsaved, you know, equivalent to the Gentile that we had before. Um, yeah, right. Rather than specifically somebody who is evil or sinful, you know, these, okay. are, these are just pagans. Yeah, and, and yeah. also it's slightly different in that Jonah wasn't kidnapped, um, but Patrick Correct. was. So right. So to be a little bit more hostility <laughs> um, than regarding Jonah. So uh, maybe it's uh, maybe he's um, assuming that the Aleoliket Sansu refers back to this. The one that's later in the in the yeah yeah you know maybe we were supposed to believe that yes it's sort of in the way but not exactly right right okay uh, okay. Um, Good. So we're at postea bis. Yes. Yes. Uh, postea bis denis, uh, sino et octenis diurnis luminibus, um, moisico more. Is it moisico? I guess so. 
uh, more aleo licet sensu uh, per desertum fatigatus. Okay. Um, afterwards, twice ten at a time, and at the same time, eight daily lights. Um, I'm thinking days. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. in, in the custom of Moses, although for different reasons. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, through the exhausting desert, uh, murmurantibus gentilibus quasi Oh, sorry, not through the exhausting desert. Um, can't go together. Exhausted. 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 Through exhausted. The desert. Yes. Through the desert. Yeah. Right. Exhausted. exhausted. That makes more sense, yeah. Because it's not a, it's not um. Can we, can we go back uh, a little bit and just take that whole clause from Postea to Fatigatus uh, again? Do you want me to read it or do you uh, want me to read it? Just translate. Um, afterwards, twice, ten at a time, and at the same time, eight daily lights, well, eight days. Um, In other words, for 28 days. Right. Okay, right. yeah. Now, why you just couldn't say that, I don't know, but. Well, I was wondering is twice 10 would be 20, and then, yeah. Right. It's like, right. why did he have to say four? And then again, eight. <laughs> because it's, it's super odd that he's using those distributive number, numerals in this passage because it's not distributive, as it's just three in the first one and then 28 mm -hmm. here. Is it not? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, th I thought that was rather weird. Yeah. Well, the whole phrase is kind of weird. Mm -hmm. And I think it's afterwards by 28 days, like 28 days later. Yeah. 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 Right. But why does he say two times 10? Why? I mean, the perfectly good word for 20, why not use it? So I don't know if it's an illusion that, that, that the commentators haven't spotted or something. It did a ton of numerology, so it might be all symbolic. Oh. But um, I don't know a lot about that. Mm. But, but what I'm I'm having a hard time putting the three three days and nights together with this. He's he's been he's been tossed about in the manner of Jonah for three days and nights, and then after twenty eight days. Well, then well, so then he hits land. Okay. And so, then I mean that we have to get to the end of the sentence before you realize what's going on. But but. Um, but this is basically, he hits land and then he has 28 days in the desert. Okay. All yeah, 20 tired days out. Got us per desertum. Right. And desertum, since we've stopped there, um, really means uninhabited area rather than our kind of a desert. Yeah. It means a wasteland, um, something like that. Wilderness. Yeah, Ireland wouldn't be a desert. <laughs> Right, or this is right. Britain, I think. Well, he's Britain. back in Britain or now. Britain. Right. Um, either one. <laughs> but right, either that, that's not a desert either, right. So, okay, so, so, so through the desert, exhausted, and I'm, it's almost, I hadn't noticed this before, but it's really only the per desertum, the fact that you're going through the, de the desert, the wilderness, that gives you that sense of you're now traveling on land, right? There's no verb of motion yet, but the per desertum kind of means that there has to be someone moving through this wilderness. Well, I was wondering about that because there are, you know, there are references in Mariner's uh, journals or whatever to the, the, the ocean as being like a desert. That's, right, that is true yeah. too. Well, yeah. partly it's. And I was wondering if I, I was. I was thinking, and I wasn't sure if it was desert or land. I mean, no, it was I think a this ocean. is land, and this is where they okay. because they're about to meet. This, this is where they meet the. That's true. Kids, yeah. Right? Um, um, and I should say all of this is much be, is described in much more detail by Patrick himself, and Murch is just summarizing the 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 account in the Confessions, um, which is why I knew we got to land. Um, Giving us the, the highlights. Right. <laughs> So, uh, so exhausted through the desert, and then he is, got still in this, he is still in the ship because you've got the gubernator coming up, right? Yeah, that's yeah but he's just there. Pilot, you know. He's just there. He's the ship. The sailors are all now on the land looking for food. Okay. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Murmurantibus um, gentilibus quasi udei. 
um, with murmuring people like the Jews. Even murmuring Gentiles, right? The pagans murmuring. Oh, right, right. Murmur, yeah, sorry. I I'm, I'm keep thinking people, but you're right, it's Gentiles. Um, fame et siti pene uh, de, de ficientibus. Uh, are we going to the next page here? Oh, no, there is a comma. Okay, so, first we'll address that. Um, oops. Hang on a second. Here we go. Um, by hunger and thirst, punished, failing. Right, almost failing. Pene is, almost, is um, high name. Almost failing. Almost okay. failing, almost dying from hunger and thirst. Right. Got it. I like, yeah. I like undone. Mm-hmm. Um, compulsus agumanatore, um, compelled by the pilot. Temptatus atque ut ilis deum suum ne pererent oraret rogatos. Um, tested and also by those, uh, so tested and also by those so that he might pray to his God and entreat you that they would not perish. Yes. Uh, that he might pray to the God that they not perish. His pray God. God Ilis for them that they not perish. Okay. So pray to his God, right? Right. Yeah, that they would not perish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But he, he is Rogatos. Right. He, he is asked. Right. So, so they're all just okay, he's being asked, asked the Christian to pray to, the God, to his God. He's tempted and then he's asked. He's temptatus mm -hmm. and then he's asked to pray and then the rest mm -hmm. of the class. Uh -huh. Okay. So is it to he's he's tested and then he's asked? Yes. Okay. Tested and and asked to pray. Yeah. And also asked, yeah, okay. Um, mortalibus exoratus. Um, uh, persuaded by deaths, mortalities. By the uh, mortal, by by the mortals. Okay. By mortals. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Turmai misertus, spiritu contribulatus, merito coronatus, uh, ad adeo magnificatus, abundantiam. Kibi ex grege corcorum a deo miso sibi. Um, took pity on this band of men with crushed spirit, deservedly crowned with garlands, praised by God. Um, abundant food and flocks of pigs from God uh, were sent to him. Or sent by him. Yeah. Um, let me. Can we take that more slowly? So the endings. You've got to do the endings. Having been having been implored by the mortals. Yep. Having taken pity, right? Um, miserior is deponent. So having taken pity on the the band. In other words, his, the band of men. Yep. Um, then what do you say? Crushed in spirit. Crushed in spirit. Yep. Crowned with his virtue or his merit and exalted by God, right? It's a weird set of, of, yeah, of events all parallel. With garlands, right? I mean, it makes sense. It's just kind yeah. of weirdly not consistent. But anyway, all of those things happen. Having so he, done that. So, so he's taking pity. He's crowned by God. And, yeah. And, and yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of that. contrast and they're, here. And they're crushed in spirit. Exactly. No, he's crushed. Um, Is it's he a, it's crushed a really lovely thing? contrast between well, he, and Well, I guess it's he crushed, yeah. He's crushed in spirit because he takes, he's sorry for the other people. Right, right. Okay. Yeah, because it's singular. Right. Object. So then you have to see, well, what's, the, what's an object of? An ob he, he, it. Pribuit, yeah. Provide. Mm -hmm. right. right. He provided an abundance, and now you can do your endings. Yeah. He provided an abundance of food mm -hmm. and flocks of pigs. Well, oh, and a an X, X. X from a flock of pigs. From a flock of pigs. From okay. a flock of pigs. A flock um, of A herd of pigs. Yes. Sent to him by God. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And 
velut ex conturnicum et cas. Sorry, velut ex conturnicum turma deo ayuvante. Um, you know what? There should be a comma, I think, after turma. Yeah. As though from a from a flock of um, dogs. Well, uh, yeah. That's another. That's that's another biblical reference. Right. Uh, yeah. As though from a flock of quails. From Exodus, yeah. Right. Yes, when God fed them with quails and manna, right? Right. Yeah. And then Deo Aduante is just an ablative absolute with, with God with helping. With God's help, yeah. With God's help. God helping, yeah. He um, provided them. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. 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 So the flock <laughs> of pigs is like the flock of quail mm -hmm. and the man in the desert. Yeah. Right. You know, Correct. it's like, oh, it's just like Exodus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Only no pigs. Only no pigs. Well, I was kind of wondering if the pigs came from the New Testament with the, the pigs that are, they, they send the man's demons into the pigs mm. and then they go running off, rushing off of the cliff. And nobody wants to eat them. Draft. I think, I, I think the conventional wisdom would be there really was a flock of pigs. Um, well, again, it probably this, was. This is more yeah. based on the, on, on, on Patrick's own narrative. He seems to have found some wild pigs. Yeah. Um, and they then didn't die of starvation. Um, go back, I'm sorry, can we go back just a little bit? The mortalibus exoratus, I don't think that's an, I don't think that's um, agent. I don't think it's ablative because there's no preposition, which I mean, I guess, oh, right. out, but isn't it dative of advantage having been prevailed upon for the benefit oh. mortal of the like people who are going to die? And it's, it's the same idea as toward my miseritus that he felt sorry for them. So being exhorted by the... So no, not for the I sake of. Know. For the sake of. Yeah. On behalf of. That would make better sense, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I guess oh, yeah. so. I find them both... I don't see how you could tell the difference. Well, because, because of grammar. Position. It's with an R up if it's agent. If he, if, it, if he was prevailed. Yeah, if we were ablative of agent, it'd want the preposition. Right, yeah. but couldn't it be dative of agent with a perfect passive participle? It, this isn't. Right? Hmm. Jen? I, I would not put that unless you were Virgil or something. I would not do that. <laughs> I, I, I have been known to be Virgil. <laughs> <laughs> well, who we knew that was coming. Okay. Uh, I'll buy that. I mean, unless that's something that we're who regularly. Is the date of a agent really very poetic? Yeah. Yeah, it's not. Okay. It's not prosaic. Since, okay. since, we, since we backed up that bark, and I asked just quickly about oraret rogatus, is that the construction being asked that he pray? With the, with ut. The, you got the ut before that. You see the ut? What? Mm -hmm. Ut? Ut? Ut's oh, really yeah. being asked. Okay, being at, and, okay. Ut oraret. In order that he pray that they not perish. Well, being asked, as to be asked that he pray, it's an pray. Pray. Yeah. ut clause after rogatus, so not mm -hmm. in order to, but just that. That. Unless they perish. Yeah, and that, that clause is such a lovely, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you've got the, the perfect passive participle with an ut clause with a nay clause. Yep. Mm -hmm. What a lovely construction. <laughs> It is very nicely it's like, interwoven. It's like mm -hmm. nesting dolls. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Also, just on Ayuante, is that a, I couldn't find that spelling anywhere for Ayuante. Oh, that, I wonder if that's in this print. I didn't even notice. I just read Ayuante. There, um, there was a note. Um, oh, really? Okay. Uh, oh, yeah, Deo Ayuante, Terma Deo Ayuante, it's. Um, I could have sworn there was a note. Hello? Um, let me let me look. Uh, oh, I guess I just looked it up. No, I, I, I think that's a flat out misprint. It's the, my text has Adiwante. Okay. Yeah, I, um, when I looked it up, uh, I got Adiwante. Yeah. Uh, it, it is it is some kind of misprint or... Yeah, or, um, it's a misprint. <laughs> it's a typo mistake. Yeah, uh, but anyway, I found it. Uh, yeah. And it was saying yeah, the Beeler no. text. Just a second. The Beeler text has A I U U A N T E. Oh, okay. Well, 
Hood has has the D, which I'm I'm basically my text is going to be the the closest to not complicate. You know, the the simplest. If some some modern scholar thinks it's got a D, I'm going to print the D, um, just to make it easier. I need to excuse myself because it's two hours. Yeah, no, it's a long time. Um, uh, was that you, you Joanna? Yes, that's, that. that's me. Okay. Uh, we'll take I did. care. I did. All right, thank you. Bye-bye. I'm the same the way. Late start. Okay. Yeah, I had to send my mom to the airport. Okay. So. <laughs> All right, see you later. Thanks nice so meeting you. Nice meeting you. Wale. Bye. Bye. Everybody. Could we do, would we like to stop here and just pick it up next time? We could. Yeah, I think we're at a good spot to stop. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can just pick uh, it up next time. All right. Why don't we do that? And um, we'll you can all, I'll keep you all signed up unless you take yourselves off the list. Okay. So, Paula, you'll you'll start again. You'll pick it yeah. up at two point two. And then we'll have um, John Mark. Are you if you're going to if you can't join us next week. John no. Mark, you've gone. I'll be able to. Oh, you're there. Wait, I'm no. here. Oh, right. You just moved. I'm right. not sure. I, 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 this I am not used to, right? So somebody, because Joanna left, everybody just moved sideways. <laughs> oh, That's, yeah. I find that kind of creepy. Um, <laughs> uh, but anyway, we'll just, we'll deal with this by, in the usual way. I think despite this morning, I mean, this, 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 the, the, the rocky start, I'll consult with the IT people, see if I can reconstruct what I did wrong. But, but is it true that everybody got there by the link posted on the Google Plus mm -hmm. page? When it finally got there. Yeah. yeah. So I, didn't yeah. Have to send it email. Yeah. And uh, I, I actually got here by an email. So I got here by an email. Oh, right, because your emails worked for some reason. Some emails worked and some didn't. But anyway, yeah. as long as everybody can get there one way or the other, that's, that's mm -hmm. a, a relief. So we'll just meet again next week if anyone wants to. Yeah, I think that's great. Yeah. And, and, and do we have all the nice text signed up for? Right. Just yes, yeah, sign up. I mean, I'll I'll put the way, I'll put the sign up sheet tonight up tonight and just grab you. I mean, I'll keep you if you if you want to be kept, and if you want to sign up for next week, just just join the merry throng. Mm -hmm. um, Nice to meet you, Levi and John Mark. Uh, nice, nice to see you here. again, Matt. <laughs> um, you too, yeah, William. All these years, it's been a long time. Has and been. Nice to see you, Victoria. We, I want to hear all about um, Elijah's college year, but but not maybe. Um, <laughs> uh, talk to you all soon, and thanks, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.